Cherokee and Lush Life are, in my opinion, the two greatest jazz songs ever. Cherokee is the greatest simplistic jazz song, where Lush Life is the greatest complex jazz song ever, in my opinion. All right, so today we're going to take a look at Cherokee. So let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, Cherokee is normally done at breakneck speeds, but for this video, for the sake of like teaching you this, we're going to keep it below 300. In this video, I want to cover five bullet points with Cherokee. Number one, pentatonic. Two is going to be repetition. Three is deviation from repetition. Number four is going to be the harmony. And number five, I'm going to show you a different modal perspective on Cherokee. This is a relatively intermediate to advanced lesson. So Cherokee is one of those kind of songs that once you start putting it all together, you test your metal with Cherokee and see where you're at. Okay. Bobby McFerrin has this fantastic video on the power of pentatonic. Bobby McFerrin, the guy who did uh, The power of pentatonic is in its harmonic simplicity. And because we only have five notes as opposed to seven, we've essentially taken out the most tension notes. All right, so the head, the melody of Cherokee is beautifully simplistic. Let's take a listen. Listen for pentatonic and repetition. <laughs> After that, all we have is a major triad that goes to the third and then the root. <laughs> Understanding this song in terms of pentatonic and triad, it makes it really easy to transpose when we can just hear the simplicity of a melody. It just it starts to come very naturally because we're used to playing pentatonic, we're used to playing arpeggios, we're used to playing scales. Give me an example. So the difference between memorization and learning is that with learning, you're basically using a much more macroscopic perspective on how to understand and learn a song. I don't like ever teaching people to memorize songs. No, you want to learn it. So that way, if you're going from tenor to alto to flute to clarinet, you learn it and then you just play it instead of having to memorize it 12 times in different keys and then having to apply that. Okay, I know that's a little bit of a deviation, but it's such a very important thing to cover. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a break. Let's pick up where we left off with the melody, ladies and gentlemen. And there's one note in particular that I want to point out that's very, very important. <laughs> There is a note that's there that's not pentatonic, nor is it diatonic. It's outside of the key. And that note really stands out. It serves the function of bringing us back to that thing that we are familiar with. Remember that note. Okay, so this is normally done in the key of B flat. I'm going to talk about it like it's in the key of C because most people find it easier to follow along if I talk about this in the key of C. It just makes it easier to see what's going on. Okay, we go back to the head, we play all of that again. So we have all that repetition, and then we have that slight deviation that's taking us into the bridge. I think this song is done most effectively when there's a dead stop right before you go to the bridge because it sounds like the band just stopped 
halfway between the song. And your audience will go, and then bah! come in at the bridge. <laughs> That F, that's a note that we have not heard yet. It jumps out so much. And then with that melody, we have this very repetitious pattern. We have repetition and deviation. And then that whole thing is played again. And then we go to the end. Setting you up for a nice solo break. I just did a video on... Uh, how to negotiate the solo break, and this is absolutely one of the best songs to take advantage of that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so right now, let's take a look at the harmony. I'm going to play the melody with the third and the seventh. I'm going to leave out the bass. I want you to listen and see if you can hear this descending chromatic line. Okay, check this out. <laughs> going to take the melody out. I'm going to put the bass in and I'm going to have the soprano sax play that descending chromatic line. Okay, check this out. <laughs> Descending chromatic line is the kind of thing you should be listening for when you play Cherokee. That guiding line is going to guide you through the entire A sections. When we get to the bridge, something spectacular happens. I'll point that out in a minute. All right, so now I'm going to put all of it together with the descending line, the melody, the bass, and the thirds and the sevenths. But it doesn't really work when I have that descending line with the melody. That descending line, that's a tool that you use for soloing. So in a few places, it's going to crunch real hard. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we get to the bridge, I want to go over this modal construct that's going on. Okay, so I just did this whole series explaining all the modes, how they fit with jazz, giving you alternate perspectives on that. But in this song, we're going to take a look at something. Because we can just think about the A sections, mostly, as just being in some kind of C mode. The first chord... Again, I'm doing this like we're in the key of C. We got C, then it goes to a G7 sharp five, which basically is a C melodic minor or what I would call a C Dorian major seven. So we can still just think C, okay? 
Then it goes to G minor 7, C7, F major 7. That's really just C7. That's mixolydian. So we've gone from Ionian to Dorian major 7 to mixolydian. Then when we get to the B flat 7, this is the fifth mode of the F Dorian major 7. Then it goes back to C. And then it goes to a D7, which is really C Lydian. Then it goes to a D minor 7. Okay, to the E minor A7. That's just a modulation. And then back to your D minor, which is C Ionian, C Dorian major 7. Okay, so we can just think about this thing like it's in C with these modes shifting. If we can hear and understand that melodic line, that chromatic descending line, that's really just telling us, here's the new note that you add to C. It's a beautiful thing. Let me play a little bit of this for you. I'm just gonna follow that lead line. <laughs> And now, the bridge, the part you've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. So if we keep that modal concept going, we notice that there is a C that's still in the first uh, 2 5 one progression of the bridge. So we can look at it like that's in a C mode, like we covered C Lydian, C Mixolydian. This one is just C Locrian. So when we get to the bridge, we can just play a C Locrian scale. <laughs> The awesome thing about the bridge is that it's repetitious and has this symmetry to it. So the whole 2-5-1 progression just goes down a whole step. Because of that, we can now play a B-flat Locrian. So here's the C Locrian. <laughs> And then it does it again. So now we can play a G sharp Locrian. Beautiful. So the rest of the bridge is really just a way of getting us back to the A section. And it does it in a style that is very reminiscent of Dixieland. Let me just slightly depart and do a little Dixieland knowledge for you. So in Dixieland, you often have the two chord and a two, five, one as dominant. Normally in jazz, the two is minor. Often in Dixieland, you will have the two chord be a dominant seven. And then the one chord goes to uh, major six. Okay, in this case in Cherokee, all the stuff that comes after those descending two five ones is really just an elongated Dixieland two five one. Instead of having just a D seven to a G seven to the one, now you just got D seven, then D minor seven, G seven to the one chord. Okay. Oh, 